No. You're going to have to come over here. I can see you, but can't hear you. Yes. Where's your camera? Oh, don't worry. Uh, -uh don't worry. Can you guys hear us okay? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay, just making sure. Thank you. You're welcome.
Good evening, everyone. Hope you all can hear us okay. I want to thank you all. I see microphones. I see video. I think we're, we're in good shape here. Um, I want to thank everyone for joining us for this Transportation Penny Advisory Committee meeting uh, here for June 2nd, 2022, 530. Uh, we are in person, uh, Mr. Maloney and Kelly and I, uh, for uh, this uh, this meeting. And, uh, looking at our call-ins, it does look like we're going to be a bit short of a quorum, so we won't be uh, approving our January meeting minutes or uh, recording minutes for this meeting, but we will still conduct the business of the committee and uh, offer this opportunity for uh, those who participate to provide their updates. So uh, with that, um, have y'all heard any public comments uh, for this meeting that we should address right there? Right, right. Great. Um, very good. We'll uh, nix item three from the meeting agenda that uh, mentions uh, approval of our meeting minutes and move on to the Office of Small Business Opportunity. Um, that's page two through 10 of our uh, agenda packet. Uh, we should have had emailed to us or would have been available online before this meeting. Um, and with that, I can turn it over to Ms. Rosenthal. Michelle, thank you for joining us. Thank you. So I'd like to start on page four, which is where the um, changes begin for us, for the OSBO office. And at the very bottom of the contract participation chart, uh, dated 15 June 2022, for, you can see the um, payments for the SLVEs that were certified is $42,456,490. And the payments for uncertified firms, $194,142,156. And then the total amount, $236,598,648 for the contract, the total for the contract participations. Then I'd like to jump over to page six where uh, SLBE certified firm status, we have seven pending uh, certifications that's not in the directory. We have 10 renewing uh, certifications and 113 certified SLBEs. But in that count, it, it also is going to, uh, it will also include the, the pending or the, not the, the renewals that's pending. So that's why the number dropped slightly. But we'll have back up there real soon. And then on page um, seven, at the very bottom, we have eight uh, architecture and engineering services. Uh, we have a total of eight of those certified under construction. We have 36. Non-professional services, we have, I'm sorry, let me back up one. Uh, construction services, 36. Non-professional services, 10. 48 for professional service, 11 under wholesale for a total of 113. And just passing through with the number of uh, internal administrative workshops. Now we did originally have um, the zoning scheduled for um, a different date, but we have to move the date. Uh, we were looking to have a certain, our targeted number wasn't reached. So we re-advertised it and uh, we'll be doing it lunch and learn for how will zoning affect my local business on June the 16th, that's a lunch and learn. And then I made my money, How? Uh, but where is my cash? That second one is an in-person event. And so we're uh, hoping to have at least um, between 20 and 25 participants for the in-person training on that. So we have a total of 594 um, attendants for the various workshops that we've done thus far. Are there any questions for me? Um, yeah, with the, uh, so did y'all have great turnout? Looks like uh, 90 and, uh, wait, I'm sorry, I'm looking at the May 19th, uh, 78 uh, attendees out of, uh, I think you said last meeting over 100 people had signed up, is that right? Yes, that is correct, and 78 
uh, actually participated. Okay, great. And then the zoning, was that the one that was scheduled for the 21st that was rescheduled? Yes. Mm -hmm. I see. Good. Awesome. Well, um, no other questions for me, Miss Eva. Do you have any questions for OBO, OSBO? Right, wonderful. Um, very good. Thank you no, very much, Miss Rosenthal. <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you, Miss Rosenthal. I appreciate your time and uh, helping us with this update. You're welcome. Thank you. Turning back to our agenda, uh, that moves it over to uh, item five on our agenda. Uh, Mr. Michael Maloney's update on the transportation pending program, uh, and that'll start on page uh, 11 of our agenda packet. Mr. Maloney. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, we did have some good approvals just uh, this past month uh, with Garners Ferry Harmon Intersection awarded to Cherokee Inc. Uh, that um, is now in, in uh, contracting phase, which uh, I understand is just about to wrap up and get a notice to proceed out very soon. <clears throat> so that project on uh, Gar Garnis Ferry Harmon to create a stronger uh, uh, signalized light uh, going north uh, off of Garnis Ferry Harmon uh, will be uh, starting this summer. Um, we've moved the uh, administrative fund balance and that's um, per the uh, attachment on page 17, I believe, um, that used to be administrative down at the bottom is now called program reserve. Um, it's the green line just below program total on page 17. It's now a reserve and it has 31.1 million uh, in that. So that, that will remain a, a reserve fund um, that would uh, be uh, regulated by county council approval. Um, the revenue to the penny was received um, and that was over uh, two sales to SCDOT for $814,016 of uh, wetland and stream bank credits. And the sale of those were also approved by council. So, uh, that was a good a good uh, shot in the arm for the uh, <clears throat> what we're trying to do is recapture uh, all the costs put into the wetland mitigation bank, which is also on page 17, uh, bottom of the just above the total roadways, which is the area surrounded by orange um, program uh, mitigation bank, um, and that had spent about 16.2 million, and now that's uh, around 13.3 million. Um, so as we get revenue come in, um, and the sales around 2.9 million. So as we, those come in, that column for uh, revenue will go up, just like we put grants in that column. Uh, and then the current approved estimate will go down. Uh, so as that goes down, uh, the total roadway projects will also go below referendum as well. I think early on in some of the older reports, there wasn't an amount in there. And it was assumed that they'd all sell. Um, so I'm just keeping track of that. So yes, we expect you know more to sell. We expect to you know be that some seven million dollars lower to be below the referendum on that <clears throat> roadway section. Um, and uh, we understand there's interested parties and some major purchases uh, coming up. But uh, and hopefully the county will receive those great economic developments that are being uh, planned. So upcoming council, uh, committee and council. Uh, I oh, before we move on sure. from uh, ad hoc, one thing that we had discussed that come up at a previous meeting, we discussed in April ad hoc, getting a letter from Valentine suggesting that the project, uh, the Broad River Widening, be moved to uh, DOT. I understand there's been some collaboration since then, and the decision's been made to keep that in-house. Is that right? Um, I'm not sure that... That has changed. Uh, that that some you know there was a letter written for sure, um, but um, I understand that um, the town of Irmo and um, at least I, I can't speak for county council as a whole. Um, a county council member of that area has indicated you know that it, our plan to keep it in house is still uh, you know 
on the table, and that is the plan going forward. Very good. Um, if we need to bring that before the entire uh, council, we will, but I, I think they'll probably you know, we'll talk to the administrator about how, how to proceed with that if he just wants to read that uh, to the, or provide that to the entirety of the council. Okay. And um, anything coming up in June at the ad hoc that we should be aware of or anything major we're anticipating? Of course, we'll keep an eye out. It was, yeah, on these two items. Um, so it is along the Broad River Widening Project. We have a contract in there for, um, I, I don't have the exact amount in front of me, but I believe it was in the neighborhood of $1.2 million for services to acquire all 100 you know, parcels along Broad River Road. Um, that is, you know, from the length of just north of I-26 going up to um, the fork at um, uh, Dutch Fork, essentially, <laughs> Dutch Fork Road and where Broad River kind of makes a, a turn there. So I call it Chick-fil-A as the north entrance because right, a lot of people have been to that one. But um, that's about, you know, it's about two miles of reconstruct, pretty heavy. Uh, going to a five lane um, with a uh, sidewalk going up to um, uh, about a third of the, the length uh, of the road uh, on the south end where there's more pedestrian traffic and then um, having a wider outer lane uh, on the road. So that's kind of what that's what was decided as the final product. Um, there's a lot of businesses along there and 150 parcels that would need to be have an acquisition performed. So the second part of that uh, request, besides the, um, uh, and, it, and it's tied to having a, a very specialized firm come in and, and provide those kind of services, uh, would be to ask council for um, uh, approval for using eminent domain powers uh, on the parcel on the whole corridor. Um, not that they would all, or any great percentage would need condemnation. It's just uh, having that uh, known as to. The will of the council at this point when we come in with all the um, appraisals will be set more up for that that condition to be there and we also have that on what's now a 30-month schedule three months ago it was a 33-month schedule so the clock is ticking on that project so, okay. so um, those are the two items and then CERN Southeast Recreational Southeast Rich and Neighborhood Improvements um, that sidewalk um, currently on Rabbit Run would be extended on up to Trotter. Um, I know that area pretty well and uh, kind of fixed a drainage issue that came off a new gas station on the corner of Trotter and Rabbit Run and had that redirected to the SCDOT ditch where it used to go to an existing residential neighborhood. Um, and we kind of took care of the pond out as well. So there's a lot we know about that corridor as far as get fitting sidewalk in. And this is uh, requesting a phase two to CERN with money left over uh, from phase one. So that's it for our upcoming council items. Um, I'm starting to put together July, which uh, I'm getting a longer list. <laughs> <laughs> July looks more like could be five or six items. So pre-construction update. Uh, on that, um, I know um, we're uh, looking for uh, permission on a specific project for the Alpine Road sidewalk project. Um, it's a drainage improvement across a, a private parcel there that has pre-existed, but we're going to need it uh, with the sidewalk project. Uh, Public Works has uh, and planning department are involved in, in that, um, getting that permission and uh, regulating that stormwater runoff. Atlas road widening. Um, we're, uh, you know, I don't think a lot has occurred there. We are um, waiting for final um, comments. And um, I think we have a few utility um, easements uh, that the city is acquiring there as well that we'll need for um, approval to go to construction. Those are uh, Columbia water. Bluff Road widening, uh, phase two, um, that uh, public meeting was run by um, Kim Tony and the OET. I was able to attend that. I believe you were there as well. I was there. It was a great meeting. Seems like a lot of good interest and a great job putting together the 
presentation for the folks to come out and see what's going on in the neighborhood. Thank you, sir. Um, and uh, Kim did a good job, and I think uh, um, the uh, the news uh, has provided some more in information on that to the public. And uh, so the ODT will submit the preliminary right away plans uh, to SCDOT after we get the uh, comments back from them. So they're probably at, it sounds like 70% plan. So the right away uh, plan approval will be getting submitted as soon as we get the public comments back. Um, Kim indicated we'll put together a meeting with the uh, OET to discuss the public comments and see how, you know, if there's any comments on things that we did or didn't have in the plans, uh, how we would address those and uh, put those into uh, the design uh, if appropriate and then send those off for right away approval. The Blathewood Road widening. Um, Right away certification is being performed. Uh, we just met uh, at the end of last week with our uh, uh, consulting attorney on that um, to get the right away certified. And um, we had a few in the eminent domain uh, area um, and one, one uh, impact to a property that's really not an acquisition, but a change of access uh, related to um, uh, the input that we received from SCDOT and those are being finalized so that we can get that to advertisement. That's the project uh, for everyone's knowledge on the uh, west side of 77, uh, extending uh, four lanes uh, for about uh, three quarters of a mile. Then Blathewood Road area improvements. Um, we received the comments from SCDOT for McNulty Street. Um, and then we're discussing those uh, comments with our OET and, and SCDOT. Uh, we will be preparing a response to on the last comments. The OET is finalizing the construction plans for Creech Road extension. So um, that was uh, kind of reviewing those with staff. And we've got a a little bit of a road extension uh, over a, a greenfield area. Broad River Road NIP, uh, the corridor NIP, uh, Michael Green's working on that. Um, the OAT began to work on surveying and uh, traffic studies. Um, plans are about 60%, and there is a DOT safety project going on in that general corridor area where they're doing some similar work, but uh, uh, we tasked our OET to make sure there's no overlap or um, you know conflict with what we're doing. But there's it generally looks like uh, some medians to kind of control uh, traffic as far as left turns out of some of the commercial areas mid block. Um, so that that's ongoing. Then separate from I guess the paving list where they're taking it I guess almost uh, across twenty six back the other way as well. I see that right on the, on twenty. They're two year on a broad river road. Okay. Uh, from I guess the uh, widening endpoint near twenty six going back towards the highway and then across to like those uh, water sewer offices over there and that sort of thing. Oh, that side. Okay. And I think that that was on the two year DOT. Paying this looks okay. out the comment right now, too. So, okay, it sounds like there's a flurry of activity going on. That there. Corridor, if you yes. work with DOT, then you'll have the right info, sir. Um, we talked a little bit of, above about Broad River widening. Um, so we do have you know, in that first uh three months, we had some uh designated tasks that had to be done. Uh, the design is underway as far as uh preliminary design. To current DOT standards, um, survey data, data collection and updates to the traffic report mem memo will be submitted at SCDOT in just a couple of weeks. Um, we did get some good information back that they accepted that some of the previous traffic studies that had been done. So that was good news uh, to not have to do those again. Um, cultural resources report and other things, part of the design uh, are underway. Mentioned before, a water main being in conflict out, or two water mains being in conflict out there. They're going to let you leave those in place, or they're going to be relocated. We, we uh, received a letter from uh, Columbia Water on those, indicating that 
the number of customers on those. It's basically, you know, the north side of Columbia all the way, you know, from, from one, one side of the county to the east side of the county. Mm -hmm. Uh, some hundred thousand customers, which you know represents a few hundred thousand people, uh, hospital, uh, multifamily, and that. So it's a, it's a important set of water mains. They're actually water transmission lines, um, fifty four inch and a thirty six inch we cross. Uh, so we, the letter and um, the letter we put together is our request uh, exception to the utility coordination manual to allow the those to remain in place. The 36 inch uh, isn't too big a deal. It does just cross right under uh, per the uh, design guidelines, but they do have a air release structure and a, a gate valve uh, that we have to look in our design to avoid those uh, castings so they're not in the, the wheel lanes of the travel lane. And then the 54 inch line actually will be about 150 feet of it traveling within the road and then out on Coon Road on the north side of that. So. Um, those those are very important to keep the project also moving on schedule, but uh, and, and and economically. But so no relocation is going to be required of those if, utilities as long as you can avoid, uh, I guess, if our structures. yes, if our request for exception is approved, uh, then they won't have to be relocated. Um, they do sound very critical, and I think we would you know take it to the highest level we could to ensure they don't get relocated and taken down during construction. Okay. Bull and Elmwood intersection has um, um, been out for bid. Pre-bid was held on June 15th. Um, so it, it uh, closes on July 8th and will be awarded. We understand that project bids with night construction. Those who work downtown will appreciate that. Crane Creek NIP. Um, Design is for phases in, uh, two and three. Um, Rashid, Rashid Mawako is working on this project and uh, uh, includes sidewalks along Blue Ridge Terrace, Hayward, Brockington, and Crane Church Road. Now phase three is Dakota, Siegel, Robertson, and Lincolnshire North Drive. So um, he continues to work on that project and design. And then uh, Crane Creek Greenway, we've uh, um, I don't know what you call that, sort of a dam area there, um, kind of a secondary channel of the, the river uh, north of 126 and south of 20, uh, I-20 bridge. Um, the, the cities um, looked at a neighborhood connector. So the only way to get that connection was under um, a, an existing railroad underpass for um, Crane Creek. and. Um, the concerns they have with that, and it's mentioned in here, but it's you'd need a literally a, a automated sump pump system uh, to clear that water out because it, it can't freely discharge. Um, so um, in lieu of that, um, they're asking us to look at going all the way north to 20, where another group may have funding to provide a neighborhood connector uh, from under one uh, I-20. Uh, to it, but we also uh, will be looking at our budget, um, see if how far we can get. Uh, it may be there's a lot of area where it wouldn't need boardwalk. Um, a lot of the existing trails in that area are on uh, the peninsulas, you know, that are kind of elevated without boardwalks. So we're looking at seeing how far we can get, and our uh, OET is looking into that cost. Um, okay, Decker Woodfield um, is a neighborhood improvement program that uh, we, we do have to finalize an agreement with uh, Richland County Rec Commission. Uh, they have uh, are providing um, long term maintenance uh, as it goes to one of their campuses there up at Decker. And so uh, uh, I found that and we'll be looking at getting that uh, reissued and uh, uh, accepted. Dirt road paving package N is being finalized. Um, so that uh, we found a few projects and we'll get, uh, I don't know if we have that, those projects on here yet, <laughs> but we're uh, getting that ready to be advertised. 
if you have any questions, I did see Jeff McNesby on the line, so we can always ask him if you remember, you can pull up the names. Um, Garners Ferry Harmon intersection. We talked about that's uh, waiting for, um, it's actually, yeah, waiting for the, not the intent to, well, I guess they call it intent to award, but it'll be going to notice to proceed right after that. Uh, Gills Creek Greenway. Um, uh, Mr. McNesby and myself uh, met with the OET on site, and uh, we looked at some options to get from um, Fort Jackson Boulevard uh, down to, I think it's called McHale um, Street. Um, so uh, it does look like um, the, is it Rose? It's a street, big, large street there. Um, Rose, Rose, Rosewood uh, Bridge is high enough to go take the trail under that bridge, uh, but not so much at uh, Garners, Ferry, Garners Ferry Road. So that's going to be an accurate crossing um, at Garners Ferry Road. Uh, it looks like a path in front of the car wash around, uh, almost uh, making a bend, uh, so not to disturb uh, developable land there, but along the car wash to the uh, creek, creek uh, uh, high ground, and then we'd be starting a, uh, a uh, elevated boardwalk uh, down to the, the Rosewood uh, underpass. So, and then it looks like <clears throat> one of the first neighborhood streets down there is McHale. So we'll be uh, following that. And that's the exact route in the uh, referendum. Uh, Lower Richland uh, Boulevard just in design, nothing new to add to that, it's in progress. Um, Percival Road sidewalk. Um, so that is going to um, the final coordination uh, that they're doing with the local utilities and SCDOT approval. Um, Mr. McNesby and I walked that project and uh, determined that, uh, you know, it's it, the road is not slipping there it's really it's just some bank work to, to, to bring that sidewalk up to grade so we're proceeding uh, and directed the OET to final to finalize the design uh, in one whole area that we have to get through Pine view is um, another one that's um, that was a, a disco project but it is a three lane road um, so it's still a widening um, and it'll provide left turn lanes and uh, uh, two-way left turn lanes in the mid block areas uh, they're at 30 percent on that project polo road widening is the same at 30 percent we do have s t resurfacing in the back uh, there uh, we did add uh, to package t uh, Dr. Ali added Mountie Road to that. That is a county maintained road that's uh, highly industrialized between um, Shop and uh, Bluff Road. Screaming Eagle Percival intersection uh, also is an advertisement. that uh, takes away the right turn lane uh, when you're on Percival to go uh, off to the south on Screaming Eagle, uh, kind of addresses it like a, a true inter uh, signalized intersection, uh, brings the traffic in closer, uh, so it should square it up more uh, at, the, uh, uh, at the intersection. Shock road widening. <clears throat> That had uh, uh, found a, that there's a undersized, uh, currently undersized uh, drainage system there that uh, we're uh, working with our OET to, to uh, come up with solutions. So that's early in design. Smith Rocky Branch uh, Greenway. Uh, Mr. Walkle's working on that one and that uh, project he received kind of a, uh, Partial request to allow pressure treated lumber for the decking, but not the uh, boardwalk railing still at 
they're requiring at the city of, uh, to use the aluminum in rails. Spears Creek Church Road widening. Um, waiting for comments and uh, on the uh, the preliminaries on that project. And we're ready to um, get very close to construction on Sunset Sidewalk. And then Toronto and New Newcastle NIP. Um, Kim Tony's working on that project and uh, looking to uh, the budget and extending sidewalk on that one to the original referendum that took it to Park Lane. Okay. So we just have our construction update. Um, we're substantially complete on K and uh, dirt road package L um, is, uh, has got uh, three projects that are just getting into rough grading and also M they've started on uh, Bowstring Road. So understand that rough grading's done and uh, we're getting our, our our pipes done on that for where you know we'd have all the they didn't have ditches on a lot of these roads and so this one kind of for the first time establishes a drainage system for the neighborhood and keep the the street runoff uh, from entering private property. You know this the two uh, nine ninety percent complete. Uh, heard all kinds of rumors of where these the shade structures are at. Um, they're actually here in the country now, okay. uh, being fabricated to their frames. And uh, um, so that uh, looks like uh, September, October on the shade structures getting installed. Uh, we do need the city to petition the court and the city council for the two uh, Divine and Getz and railroad closures. So that um, once they uh, petition that we would uh, we have in the bid items to put in the curbing to create the dead ends uh, for those roads uh, and, and a finished product there so we got to get that get the, that done all the rail equipment out as a crossing would need to be removed and then the railroad would inspect that to open the bridge well wow. so they take away the traffic before they add or take away an option before they give it back? I, I I think maybe we'll find some more detail to that, but yeah, it's it's like that. So to, to prove that being open, you have to take away these. Right, so like, I don't know that next those, fall during yeah. football season and like the you know, students come back to town, yeah. the Vine Street may be closed and so will Green Street. I don't know that there's any time to that, um, but yeah, that, that will have to happen while also not having a pedestrian option over Blossom Street. So, I mean, will there be a pedestrian option anywhere in that area? I can check on that one. Because uh, unless we're closing lanes on Blossom, I don't, I don't know where it would be. Yeah. Um, but I, I think that's something that needs to be considered. And maybe yeah. I know the railroad's not one bend and mm -hmm. offer common sense solutions, but maybe this would be a situation where they're being more prone. Yeah. Oh, we'll provide you with more details on that switch over. Okay. North Main Street. Um, we're just waiting for the contract to get started. So everything, there's nothing standing in their way. Um, that's all we have on that one. You know, it's anticipated in, in two weeks from the word we got today. And then resurfacing our um 95% complete and um Dr. Ali will be scheduling a walkthrough on that with the uh, owners of the road. And three rivers greenway phase one B. Uh Kim Tony was working on that. That is uh just going to ask builds. I'm, I'm calling it done. <laughs> now that's done, should we have a ribbon cutting or Someone that beat us I to think it. the city put the one in for the <laughs> last one. So maybe if they want to. Um, open solicitations, um, like I said, Bull and Elmwood, um, Screaming Eagle and Percival for that matter. Then when you look at the upcoming solicitations, you can line those up. You know, Bull and Elmwood and Screaming Eagle Percival are uh, at, at uh, in procurement's hands. 
And so, um, you know, we're looking at this as trying to check these off and get these done. So ST will be real soon, Dirt Road will be real soon. Um, some of the things, you know, we don't have control of is, you know, other third party comments, third party easements. Uh, some of the other projects have that going on. And then um, going through SMT, um, page 17, we have our financial report. And like I say, we've got our program reserve there. Uh, the month before, um, we created a project reserve of 52.5 million. Um, that's money that was untouched. And it, uh, you know, it's, it's a placeholder for the total program. Uh, not necessarily actual money, but uh, as revenue comes in, uh, and uh, we need to use it. Um, this is something where uh, council has asked that we, we come up with a plan for that. Uh, the areas in green on the financial report are projects that are completed. Uh, the, those in kind of a peachy beige uh, are projects that had been canceled in the past. And of course, we have things ongoing with the bikeway and sidewalk, uh, with the uh, dirt road and resurfacing, and uh, also the NIPs, which aren't able to be listed on here, but we, uh, from time to time, keep splitting those lists uh, for you to, to look at. Uh, Ms. Eva, any questions or comments or concerns on any of that? Uh, I do not. Thank you. Absolutely. Um, in Vista phase three, um, what's going on there? Or is that uh, something we're, we're handing off to the city and providing some funds and working through some stuff to try and figure out a way to get that William Street built? Yes, sir. So you look at that financial plan and I have, you know, and I'm missing some some dollars and cents on there, but I put four million in there, and I think the approval was you know a little bit more than that, like you know four hundred and four million, and then twenty thousand or something like that. Um, it's just a placeholder there right now. Um, so, in reality, I you know I don't think that was a uh, an intentional de scope. It was just we're not sure what will be left. For the city to um, use for that. So they're looking at getting a large grant and using that money for a local share. Um, when phase two is complete, we will know what balance of that 50 million is left over. Okay. And um, when you do the math, um, you know, um, we haven't done the um, work on the, the railroad closures on those two uh, crossings at this time. Um, we probably we, we've ordered materials and paid some level of advancement to that, but the install uh, of the shade structures and you know a few fine points haven't been paid for yet. So when we know uh, what all those amounts are, uh, the project's phase two is complete. You know our intent is uh, that the balance would be for that. So we're going to put together an AB for July, working with the city to see that that happens. And you know as there's if it was more than four million, would they have a plan uh, to be able to get those roads in? Right. Um, you know, maybe not everything that you want, but what would you do with that one? Sure. So I think that's something council would be interested in knowing, and, and uh, we'll bring that forward with the city when in, in July. And get those guys taking the coal tar out to cut some roads through there while they're at it. Yeah, clean it up a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what it looks like behind that tree stand that's there. You know, just. There's some pretty country back there, you know. They got deer running around, nice little pond back there. It's a, it's a nice area, so I hope they can make something happen back there. Um, also, small complaint uh, there at, at Green Street QG. There's a few manholes uh, right there at the end of this too, uh, where the rim elevation is not matching final grade, and it, it's a big hole in the road. It's driving me nuts. Um, if y'all could check it out, see if there's room for a riser. Or, Something like that without having to repave the intersection. Um, I think that would be a tremendous improvement. Okay. If you can get a grade ring in there or something like that. Okay. Um, and on Shop Road with those negotiations with DOT, are you all finding, uh, I guess, solutions that you need to? Are you all making progress there? Are you run into a DOT size wall or? Um, I don't know if I'd say it, that yet. I mean, it, it, they haven't had that much communication until recently. And um, I have to review with the OET's um, 
providing it. You know, they're they're looking at options, and we haven't had on it yet. So um, I wouldn't say it's a wall, but it's a pre-existing condition that we have um, understand. Very good. Um, so I had in our lists if we had any other appointees join. Okay. Um, very good. Thank you, Mr. Wong. Yeah. I appreciate it. Um, do we have someone yes. from the comment? Miss Andrews? Actually, uh, Miss Bowers. How y'all doing? Oh. Jackie, Jackie <laughs> Bowers. Miss Bowers, thanks for joining Ms. us. I, I have your name right in my notes, I promise. But thank you for being here with us. Um, we're on page. Let's see what page of our agenda packet we're on here. We're on page 18 of our agenda packet for our comment update. Okay, and Miss Andrews, she is here as well for um, the financial piece in case you have some questions. So um, I'll start with the Lucius Road Superstop update. Um, as you see in your package, the, um, the sky view of the entire construction site, which is coming along very well. Also, the activities completed um, this past week. Uh, we have month in the Lucius Road project is 45% physically complete. Um, Cherokee has submitted all concrete submittals for review and approval. Also, they have removed all wooded mulch material from the project site. They have also completed, completely removed all trees and underbrush from the Northwest portion of the project. And also Dominion Energy has been notified to remove and relocate three utility poles. And also to the um, traffic lights are in place. They've been installed, they're in place. They're just not operable right now. They have covers, um, bags on the lights until it's time to um, put them in motion. Uh, FNME continues to soil and compaction testing in tiers one, two, and one, two, and three areas. Also, uh, activities scheduled for next week. Um, they will continue clearing grubbing areas one, two, and three. And Dominion Energy has been notified to begin removing and relocating the three utility poles. Cherokee will also start demolition of all underground existing utilities. And they will start chipping logs, stumps, underbrush, removing material from the site. So that is about completed now. And major milestones. So clearing and grubbing that was taken care of on the 20th of May. Um, May 27th, um, the uh, sediment pond installed and functional. And coming up August 15th, concrete and asphalt installed and completed. And by September 1st, uh, electrical power wiring, cabling and poles installed and completed. And the bus shelters as well um, will be installed and functional by September 1st. And one of the things that we're dealing with now is um, we have a water leak over on that construction site. And we have contacted the city. It's been leaking since last year. So we have called, yeah, we have called the city uh, numerous times to come out and fix the leak. So the last time I talked to them was about a week and a half ago, I talked to one of the engineers and um, he just stated that, you know, they're understaffed and they are aware of the leak. And right now they have other priorities and they will get to it in a couple of weeks. So it has been leaking since about November of last year. So, We'll ask you about that one again next month and make sure there's been some progress made on that. <laughs> That's just Yes, uh, right now it's not affecting the um, construction project, but when they start to do the sidewalk, then that 
where it's going to be an issue. So hopefully they'll get it done in the next couple of weeks as they state it to me. Okay. Um, next, we'll talk about the, uh, the shelters and the um, benches. So the work that's been completed, um, site design, status reports, uh, effort review and project management, coordination with SCDOT regarding outstanding permits. Uh, AOS has completed construction of three stops and that stop number 1184, which is on Divine Street and Bonham Road. Uh, stop number 697, Two Notch, Two Notch Road and Covenant. And stop number 1101, Fairfield Road and Buckner. So new requests, we have received new requests that were submitted to our planning department. And these requests are for, you know, shelters and, and benches. So the next page on page five is, um, it's a detail of the shelters and benches, benches that I mentioned uh, previously. So those are the details and the detailed locations. And also too on page six is the same thing. Those are um, bus stop locations. That's page six. And then our ridership is next, which is um, page seven. So the ridership for the month is uh, 134,878, which is slight, it's down a little bit from this time last year. So the next report is our, um, uh, financial report. And like I stated earlier, Ms. Andrews, she's here. If you have any uh, specific questions for her, it's the, uh, the uh, finances for a period ending April 30th, 2022. So if any questions about, I mean, it's, it's there, it was submitted. If you have any questions about where we are financially and um, also for the DBE, tracking miss or oh, dr arlene prince is not available so i will try to answer on her behalf so if you guys have any questions about either of those forms i'm here to answer them if not we are done with our report and here to answer any q a okay. would you say that your uh, financial tracking is in keeping with what we would typically see at this time of the month say it one more time the financial tracking tracking about where we'd expect anything uh, surprising or um uh, different than we normally see in there um, no, everything's pretty much the same. Um, I know under our previous executive director where he and I were kind of, when COVID hit and he, you know, we get our money based off the penny sales, off sales tax. So he thought it would actually be lower. So it's actually coming in higher than anticipated. So, which is, it's a good and a bad thing because, you know, we're capped at 300 uh, million. <laughs> so <laughs> if we, you know, if, I'm, I'm glad people are able to spend, but you know, the more they spend, the more we take in, but we do have a longevity plan, a financial plan in place. We, um, you know, to get us over the hurdle when, whichever comes first, the 22 years or the 300 million. Right. So this additional revenue you can bank and then save that for uh, expenditures later. Um, okay. Right, and until we can go back to the public and ask, you know, for an extension on the penny funds or, you know, hopefully you guys will have enough um, <laughs> pull <laughs> to let the world know how beneficial it is to have the comet. You know, we, we try to service everyone. Um, right now, we're when our campaign starts here soon, we're you know trying to let everybody know that at least with the comet, you can get a forty dollar pass and ride for the month, and that's way cheaper than a tank of gas. Absolutely. So that's that's going to be our dump the pump initiative. You know, to try <laughs> to get people on the bus. And, and try to say a forty dollar pass is cheaper than a tank of gas. Let somebody else do the driving. We have um, AC, we have Wi-Fi, we have charging ports. So 
and then sit back and relax and let us get you there. I think I heard three or four rhymes in what you just told me. So obviously the advertising is just writing itself. <laughs> <This is great. laughs> yes. Very good. Um, Ms. Eva, do you have any questions or comments? I, I, I do. Um, good evening, ladies. Hi. Um, we, uh, transportation had a meeting originally scheduled for May 23rd. And, if, and I'm not sure if you could speak to this. And if not, just refer me to who I'll need to follow up um, with. But it was originally scheduled for a comment transportation meeting for the Lower Richland community on May 23rd, and it was rescheduled for today, which was June 20th. And I didn't hear anything. I'm not sure where we are with that. Can you speak on that? Have it been rescheduled for another date and time? It's actually um, going on now. So that's when we leave here, I'm going down there to the meeting. So it started at six, six o'clock. Oh, okay then. Well, I need to. I need to get off of this call. <laughs> Where is that That's meeting at, y'all? Adult yes. Activity Center, Garners Ferry Road. Garners Ferry Road, yes. Yeah, I was going to head there myself. <laughs> oh, okay. Very good. And if you're headed that way, Miss Eva, I'll, I'll spare myself, and uh, we'll be represented as a committee that way. Is that good? Um, <laughs> okay, guys, have a good one. Awesome. Right. Um, yeah, and to that end, um, short anything else, that's uh, the extent of our agenda. Um, our next meeting is July 18th. Um, we are still working to fill out the committee. I believe that uh, we have an upcoming appointment for the City of Columbia, as well as some open appointments for uh, Richland County. It sounds like maybe we're in the works on maybe one of those appointments for Richland County. Is that what you were alluding to earlier? Just, yes, I, somebody was interested uh, uh, in, in the... Uh, commercial land development area understands the needs and that sort of thing. Okay. Kind of indicated they're interested and we're gonna reach out to them. Okay, great. We'll keep looking for uh, folks who wanna be involved to sure. um, get involved and uh, look for opportunities to engage those folks as well. So um, with that and with no other comments from anybody else, I appreciate y'all joining us and we'll talk to y'all again next month. I hope that uh, more folks would like to join us uh, here in person next month, but we'll have to provide this virtual option as well. Uh, Y'all have fun at the comment meeting this evening, and uh, we'll talk Thanks. to y'all soon. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye, y'all. Bye-bye.